professional. <laughs> so how about we move on from the news stories and Mark, give us your give us your thoughts about the the Sweden game. You told me beforehand it was going to be turgid. Was it turgid? No, it was it was terrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why, it was, why so terrible? No, it was just we had the we had the wrong mix of players, I think, in in the squad and. Um, the game itself if you look if you look at the game itself there was a lot of individual errors we couldn't string passes together we couldn't really create attacks that were threatening to to sweden um we lost the goal uh, just before half time and then made tactical changes that that left everybody all at sea for the first for the start of the second half and start of the second half we again conceded and, and by then it was all the heads all heads dropped and uh, we were kind of just left kind of saving face and dignity. So for the last, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that, our, our game plan was basically to, to just limit the damage. And I mean, when you think about it as well, there's another point in terms of being an experimental squad. If I was Alexander Coco, if I was Boris, I'd be incredibly miffed because I, cause he got 30 minutes after we went 3-0 down. Uh, playing on a team which was full of youngsters. Um, and really what he had to do was lead the line of a team that wasn't really preparing to attack, that had been beaten already. So that was his chance to make an impression, I guess, to a new coach. And he got 30 minutes in which, you know, he put in, he did he made a through ball for, for Rue Periski, uh, about 70 minutes, a lovely dink over the, over the back and it dropped him and he landed the ball in about two square meters of space, which is an incredibly difficult thing to do. Um, it was a, a moment of rare quality in the game. But apart from that, he wasn't on the pitch long enough to make an impression. So, And there's a, there's a couple of comments from Huck on here, Henry, who said that Mehmet Hetemai was one of the few consistently strong players in those games. When, uh, when, when he went off at halftime, uh, it was Rasmus Schuller and Larksonen, Johannes Larksonen, who came in to the centre midfield, and they got bullied. Absolutely, every battle, every uh, every every encounter, they were they were beaten to it. And Larksonen couldn't cover intelligently enough the the runs forward that Schuller made. So Schuller went forward, lost the ball, and Larksonen was basically on his own. That's that's how the second their second goal. That's how we conceded their second goal. It looks like. Um, Hakey like it's done for pace, but really he's stuck with three Swedish guys and no covering defensive midfielder because Schuller had gone forward and lost the ball. Kali Peony says here that Luxonen was terrible, but maybe you think he was perhaps just exposed rather than terrible. I think that um, so this is like a it's like a, a nothing game, but for Rasmus Schuller, I think it's probably the worst performance I think I've ever seen because I mean I know he probably had the responsibility of driving the attacks and linking the play to two very quick wide players that didn't really want to tuck in but uh but he lost the ball so many times and he was at court out of position time and again it was laxenham was he wasn't good but he was put in a very in a very bad position and how did how did well i i made i made some notes actually while we were while we were there, about conceding just before half-time being the worst time ever to score and then letting in the second goal at the second worst time to score, which was just after half-time. And for me watching it, that was pretty much game game done. And I did watch it to the end. Uh, then I got sick during the week last week, so I missed most of the Iceland game and I missed all of the Asikor game on the Friday. Um, so how did the... And then obviously the, the Iceland game, the, the Sweden game finished 3-0. Three, three uh, and then on the Wednesday, the Iceland game finished 1-0 to Iceland. So was the performance better to, to warrant that, that better result? Uh, yes and no. I mean, the performance, the performance against Iceland was, I think, a kind of a, a, good, a good place for, for Bakke to start because we built a lot of... Uh, a lot of football. We 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 kept we kept the ball quite well. We built chances and created chances very well. We used width and we we defended quite narrowly, but we couldn't take our chances. So that was I think anybody that's watched Finnish football for more than or, or watched the national team the hooker yet for for more than I don't know 
30 minutes, we'll be well aware of how many chances we create against how many we convert, and then how many chances we concede against how many our opposition convert. So Iceland had probably in the game two, three pre, like proper chances, guilt edge chances, and they took one of them. And we had, I think, about five or six, and we couldn't put them away. So it was an improvement in that we were competitive, but by the same token, I didn't, I don't think, I don't think there was anything particularly different or better about that performance than 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 those players are capable of. Yeah, from what I saw, there did seem to be a bit of a lack of sharpness and a and a bit of a cutting edge up front. The balls coming in weren't, I don't know, weren't quite dangerous enough. And as you say, the the shots that that Finland made weren't quite sharp enough. And is that Rich? Is that kind of an ongoing an ongoing theme? From um, what you've seen with the team? Over yeah, years? I mean, I it just seems to be a case where you know the. We talked about Mixu's Christmas tree and this and that, and his, you know, steadfast. He sticks to that formation. He sticks to mostly the same group of players as well, with, with nothing. And, I mean, Backer in his time has already talked about, you know, he's made the right noises about he's looking at possibly changing for the formation, actually playing the team that the other team rather than just a set 11 that he likes, um, which, you know, gives you a little bit of hope for the fact that he might hopefully once he gets to know the players a little bit more. And that's the good thing about having, you know, friendlies against decent opposition coming up. You know, we're not playing Luxembourg. We're playing, you know, the team who are currently ranked number one in the world, you know, Belgium. Um, And it just seems that it would be nice to see some players get a run who just, didn't look like they were going to under Mixu. Uh, he's already talked about Eremenko playing him slightly differently to try and get the most out of him. He's talking about forwards who, you know, offer more than just, you know, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Pukki, but he just runs around. I always equate him to like a golden retriever, running around, chasing the ball. It, it just be, you know, just the willingness to be flexible. You know, obviously looking at my cushion, I, I'm a bit of an Arsenal fan. It's something we always say about Arsenal that they never change for the opposition, and and I think, you know, any team will say you've got to play for your strengths and you've got to play to win, not just that stubbornness that's we play this way. And you know, unfortunately, you look at Mixu at Dundee United, it's like deja vu. So, and and also Huck has said here on the messages that that when you're relying on Puki, who isn't scoring for club or country, then you're pretty much doomed to. Wasted chances, which maybe is what we what we saw. Okay, well, against Iceland, they played so they played or or they set up for these games uh, in a way that I'd have liked to see. So so their back four, they had I think three guys that had more than combined about 150, 160 caps. So their their back the back four that they had against us against Finland was the back four that's been playing through the Euro qualifiers. That's their back four. They're all big lads, six foot six foot two plus very strong, not particularly quick or mobile. And we we put it in, like Rich said, we didn't play to, to Puki strengths. We didn't put it in over the top. I mean, they sat deep, so we couldn't really do that. But we didn't bring on anybody to challenge them. Actually, Belvas got four, 45 minutes for the first half. Then it was Röpe Rieski and uh, Temo Puki, two very good guys, but very similar guys. They're not big. They're not strong. They, I, I've never seen Temo Puki go for a header. <laughs> I just like it. I think he's. Oh no! Wait, I tell a lie. His first goal for Celtic was a header from about a yard and a half. But uh, <laughs> but but so they set up with it with a with a big physical presence at the back, and um, we had the guys sitting on the bench to sit to to really fight in the middle in Boris and in Belvas, and we didn't use them. So. <sighs> It's just that's that's kind of the the most frustrating point. I will say though that in terms of the wide players, Yannis uh, Saxila was Yannis um, Saxila was was brought in to replace Riku Riski when he dropped out to finish his move to Dundee, uh, and he was I thought he was very impressive. I thought he was very very good. I thought he he, he beat his man on regularly. Uh, he got balls into the box that were dangerous. He didn't lose possession or shoot kind of. Uh, from from distance when it was quite wasteful, which is something that you can say about Pirinen on the other side. Um, 
but I did like I did like Saxel. I, I liked the way that he came in, and I liked the way that he he uh, he moved, and the way he worked with Karyarki board down the right. So that takes us, I guess, to the end of the the two games for the national team. Um, maybe now is a good chance just to just to take a, a pause, see if there's any questions. <laughs> well, also to give us some love on the on the on the screen there, but also to ask us any questions. Remember to use the slash Q if you're typing the questions on the screen here. If you're you if you're on Twitter or something, using the hashtag uh, FFS three. And while we have a look and see if there are some questions, maybe our special guest, Larry from ASICOR, would like to, to try and join us on the screen. And we can start after the questions by looking at the third and final game from last week, which was Al Hilal against ASICOR. Uh, Rich or Mark, have you got any questions that have come up? Um, I'm just looking for the hashtag on Twitter. It looks like uh, no one's joining us this time round on Twitter anyway. But uh, I mean, okay. the, the questions that Huck's chucking in about uh, the the national team, you know, they're all pretty much what we've been saying. You know, they are a little bit banging our head against a brick wall. But uh, yeah, what can I say? Here's Larry. Hello. Hello. Hello, guys. Hey, Larry. Hi. Hello, mate. It's nice to have a different voice and to have that and have that bottom corner of the screen filled yeah. for one. So welcome, welcome, Larry. Hello. Um, well, uh, so let's let's then just crack on with that with that game in Saudi Arabia. So several of the of the players from Asig or either either last year players that have moved on or or players that have just joined and, and continuing for the next season went from uh, from Abu Dhabi over to Saudi Arabia. Larry, did you see the the, the two Finland games? Uh, I I only see the uh, first uh, Sweden game, not the okay. Iceland game. Uh, Iceland game was uh, on uh, same time what we, when we were at Saudi Arabia, so I can see over there. Okay, okay. What was the? Well, of course, not asking you to give away too many trade secrets, but what was the the feelings of the the Saniyaki players that that came from the national team to join you in in Saudi Arabia? How were they feeling about the the games? Uh, obviously, they were quite disappointed because of uh, of those losses. And uh, but but uh, okay, a uh, few of them made the first uh, cap for the national team, so that's why they they were quite happy also. But but uh, okay, they were tired and uh, they only joined uh, joined like uh, for two days uh, in Saudi Arabia with us. So so it was like when they when they were uh, in Saudi Arabia, they were like. Uh, in a in a one o'clock at the uh, at the night night over there, and uh, next day we have a, a training session, but they were still uh, sleeping in the hotel room, and yeah. and the next day we have the game, so they only have one training session with with Asik or after after the game. So I didn't talk so much about those those uh, Finland's game over there. What was what was training like down there? Uh, it was it was actually nice. There was a there was really good uh, uh, pitch and a really good training facilities and uh, everything was. Uh, they were they were the people in Saudi Arabia was uh, really really polite and nice and uh, everything what we asked uh, uh, was was fulfilled over there. They if if we asked anything they 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 made made that happen happen over there and and there was uh, we were we were playing that game in the. Uh, Prince Faisal bin Wah Stadium, which is actually the second stadium of uh, Al Hilal, and uh, it was uh, uh, the next next to that uh, stadium. There was some, some this like uh, reserve reserve stadium, a, a reserve uh, training ground where we were training most of our time. And, uh, what was the crowd crowd like, Laddie? Uh, the, the local promoter was uh, a little bit disappointed because they actually ex expected more uh, more people over there. They expected like twenty thousand people over there, but there was only like uh, maybe two thousand and five hundred people over there. Okay. But uh, the local journalist, uh, what I talked with, they said that uh, there is uh, uh, it was like a holiday over there. And and all the people went uh, outside the outside the town. They went to Dubai or Istanbul or 
just outside the town, and there wasn't people so much at the, at the time in the, in the Riyadh. And also, also uh, the game was on uh, two channels, two free channels to watch over there. So people was, was watching the game at home, and there was only 2,500 people over there. But the, the crowd over there was like, uh, there was like uh, 600 ultras, ultras group over there, and I didn't, uh, I haven't ever heard so much, uh, so vocal, uh, 600 people ever, and I have heard <laughs> that. Yeah. They were, they were li really, really loud. I, I watched the, I watched the uh, uh, highlights of, uh, of the game, and I, 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 I was wondering that they, they, the people wasn't uh, heard in, in via, via the highlights. I, I don't know. You watch it live, live coverage over here. So, uh, was there any? Uh, did you hear the uh, noise of the Al Hilal fans? Or because 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 in, in when I watched the highlights, there wasn't any any chanting or singing or anything like that. It doesn't hurt in in the in the in the highlights. No, I must admit. Actually, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, when I watched the game, I didn't notice the the crowd. I, I think the yeah. the recording station was quite sort of centralized away from the yeah. from the ultra spot. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Because they have it, like they have like band over there. There was there was like they have like uh, maybe ten drums over there, and 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 they have uh, uh, lots of megaphones and uh, lots of different kind of uh, horns or something and they were they were chanting all the time uh, until uh, Asiko made that uh, one one call then they stopped and they they they, they were silent during during the uh, first uh, the first uh, 10 minutes of the second half and and started immediately uh, when they made that uh, two one call <laughs> and after that they were singing the whole the whole time so, glory supporters <laughs> yeah, they, they, but they have they have won they have what they have played eleven play even eleven games uh, so far and they have won all those so maybe it was oh, they're uh, not not used to letting in goals yeah yeah it's just like that mm -hmm. so, okay so as the as the supporters liaison officer Asiko did you pick up a few tips for getting that new stadium rocking next season <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry sorry I didn't get. Did you pick up some tips from the Al Hilal supporters? You you need to buy some more drums and some megaphones no. for next season. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> different different culture and different things. They they are doing different their own way, and we have the our own way over here. So <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but um, there there was okay. Everybody in the in the in the audience were sing, singing. When even the even the even the press. I, I was in the press, uh, press <laughs> and all the, all the all the journalists over there they were singing all all the time also, so so that is different in uh, here here, but uh, yeah the whole the game game was uh, game was really tough. Okay, Al Hilal is a big big club. They were they have they uh, year budget for the for the first team is like uh, one hundred and fifty uh, million dollars, and uh, wow. but they. They have like sponsors which are giving uh, 25, 000, uh, 25 million per year for, for the team and, and things like those. And uh, these, uh, uh, those attackers, what they have, they have Carlos Eduardo who is who is playing there. Uh, they, they were show, saying there that uh, uh, Porto, FC Porto was trying to uh, buy him and, and they offered like seven millions and they said no because we don't need the money. We need we need the players. So <laughs> it's like that out there. And uh, you you say the game the game was tough. What? How did? Uh, it's it's difficult, I guess. You're playing a strong team who are well in on the way in their own season, and Asikor are right in the middle of preseason. So it's difficult to to match the two up. Um, yeah, and a few a few of our players were playing like third game in in a week yeah. because mm. they were in a, in a national team. So, so. Yeah, but Rope scored. Yeah, Rope scored, and Rope was good. He he's on trial with us now. Okay. <laughs> somebody somebody <laughs> asked him, "Is is Rope Risky's loan loan ending?" Okay, he's on trial with us now. He he got a uh, contract with Haugesund, so we we can 
say anything yeah. else. Okay. okay. Last last year's last year's uh, half season wasn't a long enough trial. We're just going to keep keep assessing him for a, a few more weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that that kind of that kind of moves moves us on a little bit from the the experiences in in Saudi Arabia and and the and the three games in the desert um, on to sort of transfers and and things in general. And I guess Huck's question about risky. The answer is watch this space, Huck. All to be decided at the moment. Um, what uh, we we will we will speak to you some more, Larry, and then we'll go and continue talking a bit more in general on maybe some of the, the transfers that yeah. have caught the eye in the in the last few weeks. What can you what can you tell us that's been going on at Asico? Of course, the things that are for public for public knowledge, and then you know the things that only you're allowed to know, you can keep to yourself. What's happened so far? Yeah. Uh, okay, we we got uh, two defenders, uh, Jarko Hurme and uh, Tapio Heikkila, who are both uh, national team players, and then we have a young young uh, attacker uh, Younes Rahimi from uh, uh, Hifk uh, from Helsinki, and and, and then. Uh, we are now trialing Robert Iski and, and this uh, Estonian Tarmo King. Tarmo King, and they uh, they were didn't King. Uh, if if everything goes well, maybe they are playing playing in our team uh, for next season. But but I I can't tell anything about those because it's not my knowledge to know anything about contract yeah. nego- negotiation. No. Yeah, but uh, I was just I just wanted to say I think uh, then, I think Heikil is a brilliant yeah. brilliant signing. I think he's a he's a he's, yeah. he's young. He's a strong defender. He's got uh, he's got a lot of a lot of time ahead of him, and I think he makes Hoyiko's defense a ton weaker, uh, a whole ton weaker for, for the coming yeah. upcoming season. Yeah, and he's good good with uh, heading. Mm. His heading is really good. Uh, he's really good good then. And actually, actually, there's a funny thing that there was uh, in 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 the Al Hilal game. We have we, we have a defender pair over there. With uh, Henry Alto and W. Heikila, who are actually childhood friends, mm-hmm. and they have played uh, uh, since childhood, and, and uh, they were playing against Ailton and Carlos Eduardo of Brazil, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and and they were actually doing quite good job over there because because there is no players like that in Vega uh, League <laughs> like Carlos Eduardo and Ailton. <laughs> well, none that aren't so, none, so, none that so aren't on mid- trial. Job. <laughs> yeah, on trial, <laughs> on trial. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, that all changed when they uh, in, in the second half we have a uh, different different stopper over there to play they uh, instead of Heikila 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 played in the national team so they only played forty five minutes with him so mm. so and it all changed over there but also <laughs> I have to mention that uh, Jonas Rahimi is really good signing for for in my opinion because. He is young guy. He's young guy, and he uh, he showed in Al Hilal game that when he came on, he made goal, which actually didn't stand, but uh, he made a really good goal, and he came really good uh, in in the game, and uh, I, I think he's going to be uh, successful. In, in, in what position, Larry? What? In what position does he play? Um, your 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 connection is bad. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Here. What what position does Jonas uh, he, play? He's playing. He's playing as a winger, winger okay. or, or striker. He had but a trial He played as a winger. Didn't he? Um, he had a trial with PSV Eindhoven a couple of years ago, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. In 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 Saudi Arabia, he was actually a little bit star over there because he can actually speak a little bit Arabic okay. Arabic language because his uh, father is Mar- from Morocco, so. Okay. So he, he he was on in, in when we have press conference over there he was over there and there was like a uh, hundred journalists over there and they were uh, overwhelming him and and things like that. But, uh, also also Saudi Arabia I have to say something something about Saudi Arabia because they they are really crazy about football over there. Oh. There was there was one guy who actually followed our bus from uh, from the training ground to our hotel uh, the whole 
right uh, straight uh, the whole town uh, and, and come to our hotel. And he was just wanted to speak with some players and take some pictures. And then he said that, okay, he is a big fan of Scandinavian football. He said that, okay, he knows every player from Vikas League and every player from Allsvenskan and, and, and Tippe League from Norway. And he knows actually everybody. He, he knows all the players of Asiko <laughs> and he knows uh, that Pelvas went to Falkenberg and things like those. We need to we get were, him we were, on the Finnish football show. Yeah, in I like the sound yeah. of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but your, your Saudi Arabian cousin, Mark. <laughs> yeah. it's in, Mark said before about um, Heikila being a very good signing in the defence, and that's something really important because when I look at the list of players that have left, you know, one of Astikor's, um strengths last year was its defence, and most of that defence appears to have left the club now, um, and particularly Cedric Gogua, which has yeah. actually a, a gone for a, 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 according to the internet, ha- about half a million euros, which is a big deal, I think. Yeah, it's a big deal, and it also... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, lo- I love that smile. <laughs> I, got, I don't know any. I don't know anything about that smile. Check out his new one. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> it's a lovely, lovely yeah, pair but... of glasses. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it was uh, it was really good uh, move for Asiko and also for Setic, I think so because he's now going. Uh, he, he's now going to uh, pick a club and and he's going to get. Uh, Big role over there also in Partizan, and also also there is uh, uh, Pavle Milosaljevic, who is a uh, former Asiko player. Also, he is actually big Partizan fan, and he is living over there, and he he can now uh, uh, be like guide for guide mm-hmm. for uh, Cedric over there also, and and then I, I I think it, it works well for everyone. Yeah, it's a it's a good it's a a big thing. I remember with some friends having a conversation a year or so ago, and you know Cedric had just been voted the fans' player of the year, and this friend of mine said, "Well, you know, if he's worth two hundred thousand, then that's good money. We should think about taking it." So the fact that a year later it may be you know more than more than double that, according to the internet, um, that's a that's that's great business, and it allows the club to to rebuild the team i guess there's one yeah. other one other thing that i don't know if, if everybody knows about but there's been a change on the on the coaching side as well laddie maybe you can yeah. introduce the new first team coach at Asico. yeah we got uh, brian page who is a former uh, player from from norwich uh, peterborough uh, peterborough and uh skanto and he is he, also he played in uh in San Diego in, in, in the States. But uh, he started coaching in the States and then came back to England and he used to uh, work with Kit Carson's uh, youth academies uh, uh, in Peterborough and, and uh, Kettering. And uh, he, he was assistant coach in Kettering and, and Houston. And then, then later on, he was a uh, Houston uh, manager. manager And, and uh, he was, he's really uh, respected uh, youth coach over there and youth academy. People, uh, I have seen now Asiko's Twitter site, and there's like uh, uh, tens of people are now giving giving regards him and saying that he was the nicest guy ever I I worked with. So 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 he he he's uh, but I have met him like two times now, and, and he he's really a nice guy, and and uh, uh, he was a, a friend of uh, Chris Cleaver, so so he's like a little bit like Chris Cleaver uh, recommended him to Asiko and also also talk him about Asiko and and then there is this Kit Carson thing because Kit Carson used to uh, in the 80s and in the 90s he he used to uh, uh, be like a friend of Seinäjoki football uh, via uh, TP Seinäjoki and there, there was there was that time and 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 he bring when he was working with Norwich he bre- uh, brought Norwich played play here in uh, Finland and and you, most most of people, uh, older people in Finland, remember those when they was like Ipswich and Norwich and uh, 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 these championship teams was playing in Finland uh, pre pre season those. They were actually organized by Kit Carson mostly, and and uh, Kit Carson was uh, uh, he's uh, actually every year if I 
remember correctly, he, he's here with some soccer school here in Finland. And, and, and uh, uh, Brian Page was uh, with him like, like uh, maybe seven or eight times here. So he knows Finnish football and he knows, knows all the, all the things. Okay, he hasn't been here uh, since winter. So, so this was like <laughs> shock to him that, okay, they, they wasn't green and no sun. <laughs> He'll get, used, he'll get used to that. But he get used to that, yeah. And, yeah, and he's, he's, he's have to keep him here until midsummer, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's come in because Chris Cleaver's decided to go back to the UK. And the official line from Chris is that he has a few options open and we're waiting to see exactly what, what comes from that. So uh, that's that could be my news in a future episode. Yeah. 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 We we'll watch this space. Yeah. While while Laddie's here, does anyone on the message board or either Mark or Rich have anything that you want to ask of him? Otherwise, Blab has this function where I can actually officially kick him off the conversation. And uh... okay, well, I've got one first. So, uh, well, Mark, go on, then, Rich. Hold on. Hold on. You got you got Rich. Yeah, no, um, I was just going to ask how the new stadium's coming along. I've seen a couple of pictures of it looking very uh, snowy, but uh, is it all going to be ready for the Champions League? Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, it, it's actually everything is going uh, according to plans. Plans now because they are okay. There has been uh, this harsh, uh, 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 my, my, more than minus twenty uh, degrees. Uh, so, so that that little bit changes the schedule. But uh, they can do all the all the inside works at the time okay. during that. Uh, they they can build the uh, electricity or anything something like that during those. And maybe yeah. I, I hope that those uh, harsh winter is now over. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, it was looking good when I saw the, uh, well, the foundations anyway. When I went to visit the training ground with Mark, so uh, yeah. yes, uh, look, looking good yeah. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. It it will be uh, on June, June two thousand sixteen. This this is, yeah, and we are play we are playing there all all, all our uh, Champions League games over there. Yeah, good. There are going to be plenty of those. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you want? Uh, in, the, I don't in, know. in the qualifiers. It might be nice to play against uh, FH again and beat them. <laughs> but we are actually we are actually going to uh, Marbella uh, again uh, on a on a preseason training camp over there, and we are playing against FH again over there. So <laughs> <laughs> so we are we are getting familiar with them. Yeah. Um, there's there's a question come from Keke um, asking if Kloppet have any special plans for the Champions League games in the new stadium. I think so. I think so. Actually, we are we are already uh, having some kind of plan. Uh, we are we are we are uh, like uh, we are having those blueprints for for the uh, our own place where, where we can see that I'm not it. We are standing all the time, of course, but <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, but uh, they're going to be TIFOs or something like that, oh, of course. Excellent. Should be good. Cool. Laddie, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for joining us and, and bringing a bit of kind of focus from ASICOR. Um, yeah, I'm only you. going to kick you off of the conversation, but you're very welcome to carry on listening and making, making yeah. comments in the in the message box, but thanks. thanks yeah, all right. Okay, bye. Take care, mate. Oh, oh. So, goodbye to Larry. And there was there was scheduled now another break for questions. Um, the message board have been making comments and obviously Keke asked his question, but I don't see anything else here on the on the message board here. Anything on social media for either of you other guys? Uh, no, nothing on the uh, hashtag, unfortunately. Okay, well, that's that's all right. Why don't we move on with some of the other transfer news? So, um, yeah, it was, um, it's been quite a interesting couple of days. We've yeah. seen, so um, I mean, well, it, I mean, if you think about transfers, uh, for Finnish players in general, the best, the best one that I can think about is, uh, mild mannered, lovable Kasper Hammerleinen. Let his uh, let his uh, let his contract run down with Lech Poznan, and um, about I think it was about two two three days ago, which Rich broke I think exclusively. Uh, he signed for for Lech Poznan's bitter rivals Legia Warsaw. 
who are currently, I think, second in the Polish league, while Poznan are about, I think, eighth and ninth. And it's it, it's it's a really strange it's a really strange move because he's now probably one of the most hated men in Poland, and Poland's like a an angry it's an angry angry place to start with. Um, <laughs> I, I know one of the guys, one of the one of the journalists from the Poznan side, I, um, I've chatted to quite quite regularly, and he said uh, when when um, when uh, when Kasper let his, his, his contract run down, the fans were kind of de- dejected and sad and, and frustrated. And I checked back in with him and he said, yeah, th- th- I've never seen people this angry before <laughs> before, before at Potsdam. And it, like, Potsdam's a, a big club. It's got a long history. It's got a lot of people. Um, but uh, the, the pictures of him um, swooning around and playing, uh, going to basketball games with the Legia Warsaw chairman didn't go down particularly well. On the plus side, I get to learn a lot of Polish swear words, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm pretty sure I can't pronounce. It but, sounds um, like you're going to need to know them as well. Yeah, but 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 Legia, they're probably the favourites to win the league, even though they're second and off by ten points. So I think, I think in terms of in terms of Kappe himself, that's a good move. He's got a lot of, um, he's got a lot of credit in uh, in the Polish leagues so and and I think the deal goes until he's 33 32 33 something like that so it'll be a big contract and it'll probably be his, his his last big contract before he comes back to Sweden so I think it's a I think he'll get game time I think he'll probably win more trophies and he'll still play in Europe which is a pretty important thing for for Finland and he'll still get to kind of uh, mix around it in the in the front three so center and center left and right which is what we want so it might it'll hurt a lot of the polish fans but um but i thought that, i think i thought that was a smart move from 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 Kappe. And but, rich um yeah the, the in sort of fake house league uh, there've been some you know the last few days we've had rich? all sorts going off hello can you hear me hello yeah we can we've got you oh yeah um yeah you've got all sorts of rumors going off with you've got gideon bar being transfer to Barcelona, whether that happened. Mark's looking very lost. No, I'm still here. I'm typing something. I can't... I can't can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear Mark. Okay. Yep. I am here. Oh, good. Yep. Um, Yeah, basically in the Vakehaus Liga, you've got um, the rumour that Gideon Barr is meant to be transferring to Barcelona B. It's... um, it almost rivals the Errol Markkinen transfer for a little bit of left field. His agent's obviously done quite well there. Um, you know, whether that goes through or not remains to be seen, although it's it's looking quite likely. Um, and Faith Obilor, who, you know, all the rumours for ages have been that he's going to be transferring to Turkey, and it turned out it was Turku. And he's, <laughs> and, um, he's signed for Inter, and it's... You know, he was the best play, the best defender in Vakehouse Liga. Uh, was it last year or the year before? You know, so like Gogua, he, you know, African defender, very, you know, following that line. And then all of a sudden, it's all fallen through and he's gone to Inter, where he spent a bit of time in the past. Um, and the other one to note, really, is uh, as someone who comes up regularly on this podcast is uh, Boris, who... Uh, Looks like he's moving to St. Gallen of Switzerland, um, which, you know, effectively means that Rops have lost the entire spine of their side, which will make things very, very interesting in the summer because they've lost their first choice goalkeeper. Herodetsky's also gone today to a club in Czech Republic. Bohemians. Bohemians. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and now Coco looks like he's gone as well. So... With, crazy. with the ironic exception of Mossa, who now might stay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so much for his, uh, was it Azerbaijan or Kazakhstan? Think, yeah, meant to be yeah I think it was Karabag. I mean, they're not much to be, I mean, they're not, not a particularly great club, but they're Champions League. You know mm. what I mean? That's, if he gets in the Champions League group stage, that's a, oh, was it Astana? Sorry. I always get Karabag and Astana mixed up. <laughs> Yeah, Karabag, um, you got to pay five p for that now. So <laughs> oh, that's one. That's one for the twenty twenty five cents over yeah, here for as the well. finish listeners <laughs> for a carrier bag. Yeah, 
You keep, you keep your clever wordplay to yourself, Rich. <laughs> I'll take that to work tomorrow. <laughs> Huck says that Marlinen gets to yell more now. I guess that's because his players have all, all Well, um, if you saw the Reddit thread that went over the sort of back end of last week, mm. there's a an American footballer is coming over to Rops for a trial. He decided to, you know, very intelligently leave it to the last minute to ask for some advice. Uh, the first two pieces were, it's fucking cold, pardon my French. And the second was get some earplugs. They posted a link to uh, an AC Aulu game from a couple of years ago when Juha Malinum was just screaming, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. It, um, it was hilarious. And as Huck refers to, it's a cracking video. <laughs> and and uh, don't apologise for swearing, Rich. It wouldn't be the finished football show without you dropping the f bomb. But no. I will I will try and find a way to skillfully keep us <laughs> below be, be, below the eighteen rating. I'm sure we yes. have we not, we must have you know scrimped for a beep machine by now, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't I haven't quite learned how to beep beep out the obscenities because when I record the Explore Finland radio show, I Try not to curse too much. Uh, I was quoting, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what you did last time as well, was you quoted yeah. someone else swearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think one last, man- last mention on the, on the transfers, Jere Urnen went from Helsingborg to Ghent, who play... Oh, I think, they're, I think they're playing now in the Belgian Cup that I need to watch for the second half. And I think uh, they would have paid something in the region of seven or 800,000 euros for him. Hmm. So that's a, I mean, he's, it's, he's a strange one, Yeri Urenen, because you forget that he's 21 and he's been playing for like four or five years, uh, like regularly in all, in the, in the Allsvenskan. So mm-hmm. it's a, I don't, I think it's a good move in that he gets closer to, uh, gets closer to the bigger leagues, like, like France, Germany and Holland and, and England. So he, it, he's got more chance of getting noticed in Belgium, but I don't think Ghent is the is the right is the place that he'll be at for for the longer term. The Belgian league isn't one; it's like a, it's a one one or two horse race. So Ghent on one of those. So it'll be good for him for the next year or two, and then it'll be good to put him on the radar. I think. Huck there is has asked about favourites for the Liga Cup, but I wonder if that may be something we should keep for next time. Uh, the League Cup will maybe be a bit be underway by then and we can have a bit of a review of what's happened so far. Yeah, I mean, the, the first game of that is on uh, Friday. The group matches go all the way through to the end of February. So uh, I think we've got a fair bit of time then before they... Because they've changed the format again and it's just ridiculous. But um, yeah, there's a lot of games and yeah, it's, we've got a good five weeks or so before we know who's going to compete in the final. Mm. I reckon, I mean... I don't want to get too much into it, but I'm going to lump on Hifke. It could be a good bet. Yeah, bit, I mean, they're my they're my they're my dark horse for it because I think uh, they've got a, they've got a nice squad. Um, they've still got money, um, so so yeah. I mean, having said that, they also play first. So now that I've said it, it's a damn sure that Lahti are going to knock like four or five past them, four or five past them, and demoralise yeah, but- them. But we won't know because uh, obviously there's no fans there, so they may just have a computer to pick out the result. Ah, yeah, it could be like that. Yeah, the big con. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mark's rejoined us. I have yeah. rejoined. Sorry, I had to just step away there for a moment from the screen anyway, but I was listening. Um, yeah, but, um, in terms of transfers, we... I, I just forgot one, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Coops have signed someone from... A Nigerian cub, um, Kwekuke, is um, he was playing for one of the big Nigerian clubs, and um, strangely, Coops announced his signing on a two-year contract. Picture of him holding the shirt up, and then a couple of days later, he's quoted in Nigerian newspaper as saying, "I never signed for them." <laughs> um, now, it could, it, the dust seems to have settled on that, but Coops at the time said. Well, he has signed for us. We've got a picture. We've got the contract. He plays for us or he sits and bots for two years. And FIFA have got form for this and generally backing this up. But uh, Mm. it just seems to be one of those that, you know, someone claimed that the photo had been photoshopped, which, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised. But um, (laughs) I just uh, thought it might be another one of those sort of 
Freddie Adu sort of, you know, a big signing, and there's got to be some controversy around it somewhere. <laughs> but uh, well, we'll follow yeah. up. We'll follow up that next time as, as yeah. well. Um, before we we head off on, and end this and go off the record, and I, I'm respectful that Mark has got half a half a game that he wants to wants to watch on the TV shortly. Um, how about we just redo those news stories that we, we talked about at the very beginning? How does that sound? Okay. Yeah, sure. good. Okay. Uh, I think we start with you, Mark. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, the thing that caught my eye um, recently in the last last week or so is actually something that was uh, noticeable for its absence in that the Palolito announced uh, two days ago that on June the 1st, Finland will play Belgium. Um, which is a brilliant, brilliant game. It's a great test for for Finland because they're Belgium are a proper team, and with ten days before the start of the Euro 2016 in France, they're probably not going to be at it 100%. So they'll be competitive. They'll they'll have quality, but they won't be throwing themselves into 50-50 tackles, and they won't be uh, give, giving giving their their absolute all. What it, what they forgot to mention, or what they didn't mention, is that on June the first. Uh, that's smack bang in the middle of when the Baltic Cup is played, uh, which is something that Finland's participated in for the last, I think, three, four rounds, and we've never won it. Um, it's played in Lithuania, uh, Latvia, and Estonia, so it's kind of a, uh, it's on a tour tour basis this year. Um, and after digging around on three or four Latvian websites, I managed to find out that there was a, a meeting back in November in which it was agreed that that Finland wouldn't participate, and for me, I mean, it's always it's always good on the one hand when I can when you can say that we, we're going to go and play somebody like Belgium, we're going to go and go and really take on a a, a champion, or a, or at least a top quality side. But by the same token, there is I, I think there's a there's a huge value for Finnish players in in winning a cup. That, that knocks out your neighbors. You know what I mean? Having having local bragging rights, even if it's just over Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, it's still worth something. And I think at the minute, those are three, three beatable teams, three, two, three winnable, really winnable games. And it's just a bit disappointing more than, more probably the way in which it's been handled in that it wasn't communicated particularly well. It wasn't, you know, it was it wasn't uh, it wasn't mentioned anywhere in, in their websites or in their plans or in their fixtures set up for for 2016. I mean, also, I'm, the, probably the biggest thing that I miss is the fact that we don't get to jolly up on the bus and uh, head down to, to to Tallinn or to to Latvia for um, some sunshine beer and football. Maybe That's... the beer is better in Belgium. Uh, I mean, the beer is better in Belgium, but. It's not it's as further away. It's further away. It's not. <laughs> it's not as sunny, and it's only one game. And you know, um, well, I mean, it's. I, I, I'm. I'm really pleased that. I mean, the Belgium game is on top of Norway and Poland, so that's two, three, proper opponents, real, real tests for the team. Um, but by the same token, you know, I, yeah, I just. It's. A, it's a minor tournament that we can kick on from the Baltic Cup, and it, it's just a shame that we won't be in it this year. Or yeah. And Rich, what was your news news story that caught your eye? Uh, my news story was uh, about the Liga Cup, which uh, kicks off on Friday. Uh, the second match on Saturday between FC Lati and Hifki um, will be played with no fans present because the Lati management have decided that it is not economically viable to pay for the security staff to police or to maintain the security of the high-risk Hifki fans. So they've decided there'll be no fans. Um, they've given five days' notice. And, um, yeah, which sets a worrying precedent. I think, uh, as we've talked about before, uh, Finnish football culture seems to be at a stage where it's find, trying to find an identity. It's sort of taking bits from all over Europe and South America. And any. it just seems like this is a very overhanded way of stamping out a problem before it occurs and obviously with my professional hat on literally it's um something that you see regularly where you know you want to quell this but it's not like it's violence it's not the hooligans it's not the the football specials of english of england during the 80s for example you know it's 
a few Helsinki fans who, yeah, they have a bit of flares and a bit of noise, but Lati in the last couple of years seem to have been a little bit hesitant, you know, with Hoyuko fans that have come to visit. They seem to, it just seemed to sort of take that back step and it just seems like a very overzealous way of dealing with things. It's, to- it's totally crazy. I mean, have they not... You, I, you know what we've seen what Hifki fans are like and I think they're they're, they're all okay so I, they I guess on the line of, of enthusiastic slash you know rowdy <clears throat> so they've got it so they do have a, a reputation which in fairness they've earned but I mean is it not a bit naive to think that well it seems to have, it seems to have paused in mid in mid words. <laughs> the the vagaries of the vagaries of technology. I think, I think well, decided if they say something like this, they've had enough of this. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be back in a moment. I'll, I'll go. I'll go with my news. Yeah. With my news story, um, which was the the, and I'm I'm grateful to you, Rich, for pushing these things in my direction. But was the uh, the signing of. Uh, former Everton and Nigeria striker Daniel Amakachi as the new manager of uh, of FC Hercules, um, which, you know, I haven't followed his career and I had no idea he was coaching. Maybe that's my bad. But the fact that, that Amakachi is now pitched up here in Finland to manage was something that, that made me think, oh, interesting. Yeah, it's... um He's got links with uh, top spot who have a lot of you know tentacles everywhere it seems they um in the north of finland anyway with the uh ps kemi and robs and ac Olu. so it seems like a you know it's strange but in an almost strange way it's logical he's got some coaching experience he was the sort of temporary manager of nigeria for the best part of a year so you know it's not a completely random appointment for a name it sounds like you know, he's genuinely looking to, you know, he's got some pedigree anyway, which uh, is half the battle. Yeah. Well, I think that maybe we've come to the end of the the Finnish football show, Mm. episode three. Um, I'm about to play the the theme music and we're going to go off the record for a bit. There's still, we still got double figures watching us live so stick with us stick with us guys because i do want to run this idea by you about extending the output from the show and maybe getting you guys involved a little bit so for for again we'll we'll try and get back in in a month or so's time in the middle of middle of feb for episode four uh rich thanks for for, thanks for being here again this week mark same to you thank you very much yeah and here comes the music see you again soon guys bye-bye bye